Hi there, in this short video I'm going to talk about the principles behind checking our personal protective equipment, our gear when we go to work. Okay, um, It's quite important that you go and get some proper training to do this thoroughly. Um, there's only so much you can learn from internet videos um, and books and things like that. Um, a proper competent person course uh, is brilliant, um, so these kind of you know, short training videos are no substitute for one of those. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to run through some of the basics and some of the things we need to bear in mind when we're looking at recording the history of our equipment and doing our inspections. Um, I'm going to start with logging. So you should really be able to trace uh, the history of every bit of gear that you use um, while you're working. If you've got a spreadsheet or written records it doesn't really matter but if you go and pick say one carabiner out of your equipment you should be able to kind of match that up with some paperwork to be able to trace where it came from you know when you got it um, record its inspections with that information so you've always got a history of those and if you know when you purchase the item you sh and when you start to use it, if it has a lifespan, you'll know exactly when it needs to be retired. Um, so that logging is pretty important. It doesn't have to be you know, really onerous or super detailed, but you should be able to know that anything you, know, you can put your hand on in your kit store uh, will have some record behind it. Okay. Um, and also kind of to know that an item is yours um, you want to develop some way of marking your equipment um, you know non-destructively and you know in a manufacturer approved way so that you know uh, what is yours and if you go in through your rack of carabiners and you pull one out of the same type that you've got but it doesn't have that marking you go oh I've stuck that in my pocket last time I was working at so and so outdoor centre. Need to get that back to them because um, it's you know quite important that we don't have random bits of equipment uh, making its way into our stuff. You know without any history, we don't don't know how it's been used or how it might have been misused in the past. Okay, um, if you're not sure about how to mark your kit up. Speak to the manufacturer, look on their websites, you know, gear tape, dots of paint, um, cable ties, there's lots of different options. Um, you know, we tend to shy away from things like engraving these days, uh, although if you speak to the manufacturer themselves, they will tell you how to kind of identify your kit um, appropriately in a way that's not going to damage it. Um, but I tend to use a mix of gear tape and little paint dots, but all on parts of the item where they're chemically not going to affect that. Okay, If we put a dot of paint on a sling uh, or something like that then we've, we need to retire that sling, it's got a contaminant on it. So markings on labels or any part of an item that is designed to take a marking and the only way you can find that information out is to speak to the manufacturers themselves. Okay, um, so there's a few different checks we need to do with our equipment. Uh, we should always check stuff just prior to using it, that's our pre-use check. Um, we should check our equipment after any unplanned event, so it takes a fall or you, I don't know, uh, reverse over a sling in a car park or something. Um, you definitely want to kind of isolate that and check it thoroughly before you are using it again. Um, and then we've got our thorough uh, inspections that happen on a kind of a period set out by our risk assessments. So we do need to have a recorded thorough inspection of all of our equipment at least every six months. Um, in a harsh kind of environment, if you're caving a lot, you'll probably want to bring that frequency down um, You know, more, more often, maybe every three months or whatever. Um, but we should certainly be doing an inspection and recording that every six months as a minimum really okay um, prior to inspecting it make sure your kit's clean all right if everything's covered in mud you're not going to be able to see damage uh, hiding under there but also the mud itself um, especially like Derbyshire cave mud once it gets into fibers and dries out it's just like tiny little crystals of calcite chewing away at the fibers inside so keeping your gear clean regularly is quite important but certainly for inspection you know if something's filthy before you inspect it clean it hang it up somewhere cool and away from direct sunlight to dry naturally and then come back and do that item uh, when it has dried and it has been cleaned okay um, so the principles of checking 
gear, um, they're really very simple. It doesn't matter whether it's something straightforward like a sling or a more complex item like a pulley. Um, we just need to follow these principles. Um, we're going to look at the item, we're going to feel around the item and we're going to check any methods of operation um, that it has. So like a rope grab, tooth jammer, should clamp onto the rope and should lock in one direction and should slide in another direction. So set yourself up a little bit of rope hanging um, just at ground level while you're doing your inspections and after you've been through and kind of looked and felt around the device, check it actually does its job. Okay. Um, so when we're looking at things like textiles, be they rope or slings, um, go to check the label first. So this has got my uh, ID colour dot on it, um, but it also contains a serial number for this device and its date of manufacture, so I can work out straight away if this is in date, if it's mine, um, and if it's not mine or if it's out of date, I don't have to go any further, I can immediately kind of retire this from use. Um, but if it is mine, if it is in date, I'm going to carry on going through it. So I'm looking and feeling. My eyes should pick up most stuff but my hands will also feel for other types of damage in there. So I'm looking for things like cuts, nicks, tears, heavy abrasion, uh, anywhere that's melted, um, anywhere that the stitching has been damaged. So, you know, these textile items will have this stitching done in a contrasting colour, and that's there to help you identify the important structural stitching and to inspect it. Um, contaminants could be anything from uh, us writing our name on something with like a you know, with a permanent marker pen, um, to paint, dog poo, human bodily fluids, ugh, yeah, um, things like that. So um, just, yeah, looking for that damage, feeling for that damage. Now something like a sling doesn't actually have a function to check, really, so there's no kind of mode of operation on this. You don't have to go and wrap it around the tree and pull on it just, you know, because it's inspection time. Um, but if it did, we would check that function as well. Um, so if I'm looking at some metal gear, um, so additionally, again, I'm looking, feeling, checking for things like, is it bent? Is there excessive wear? Has it got sharp burrs on it? That's, that's part of that feel check. Um, has it got corrosion? Uh, is there any cracking and things like that? Um, again, I can see my individual company mark on this and it's got a serial number so on my logging system I can you know link my inspection back to this device and, and record that. Um, yeah now this one does have a function being a carabiner it should open shut uh, the locking gate should operate uh, and another thing to check with these is to kind of open the gate and spin the locking barrel just make sure it doesn't come off the gate itself. Um, yeah and then with more complex items of PPE, it's the same kind of thing. You know, look, feel, check the operation. So checking for sharp bits, you know, looking for deformation. I might compare that to a new one if I had any doubts whether the side plates have been, you know, pushed in or bent or something like that. And then I'll put this on a piece of rope and just give the, uh, the wheels a bit of a spin, make sure the bearings are all operating quite nicely as well and again this has got my mark on it and the manufacturer's serial number so I can kind of match this up with my own, re my own record so I can record this inspection um, and check the dates and lifespan and things like that. Um, so if I go through this stuff uh, methodically um, I may end up putting a couple of bits aside to go back and have a look at later. Um, if I've decided that I'm going to check out on something so there's a bit of wear on something and I want to make sure that you know it is an allowable amount of wear um, I put that into like a quarantine area it doesn't have to be anything posh it could just be a box you know in your office or tag it up with a cable tie and a, or a tie on label or something like that um, just so that you can't accidentally start using it again until you've satisfied yourself that it is safe to use um, bigger centers uh, activity providers should you know seriously consider having a quarantine bin or draw an area where anyone who's working for them should 
could put their gear into it um, for their competent person to check. Um, but as a kind of an individual checking your own gear, if you can just keep track of that item, so you've got a carabiner or something with with a bit of wear on, and you want to check with Petzl to see how much wear is acceptable, just just tag it up and put it to the side, just just so when you're tidying up after your inspections, you're not accidentally going to put that one back in service prior to checking. Yeah. Um, if you have decided that you're going to retire an item of equipment, though, um, it's met the end of its life either because it's uh, expired, it has a has a you know a finite lifespan like textile item or it's become damaged sharp stopped operating um, then you need to remove that from service and you don't just want to chuck that in the bin because um, you know someone can pick that up further down the line um, and potentially use that so you do want to destroy this equipment uh, put it beyond use if you're going to retire it um, and because we need to log and have a history of our equipment one of the ways of doing that certainly with like uh, textiles is to cut the labels off them and keep that with your paperwork for a little while so you've got proof that you destroyed that item and then just cut that up into small chunks um, so it can't be used for anything. With a connector like this or some other kind of metal work what I might do is put this in a bench vise uh, and get a hacksaw or an angle grinder and some goggles and all that kind of stuff um, and, and chop this into a couple of bits just so that there's absolutely no chance that someone can fish this out of a bin um, and, and reuse it again. It's my responsibility as the owner and user of this bit of kit to, to make sure it goes absolutely beyond service when I retire it, when I choose to end this product's life, I should be destroying it, okay? Um, so I can only go into you know, uh, the principles of it in this video, but what I'm going to do coming up is I'm going to produce some other videos looking at kind of specific types of equipment uh, and some of the common things to look for. Um, so for instance like carabiners, show you, you know, examples of wear and corrosion and failures in their, their functions and things like that. Um, so I'll go into a little bit more detail on that, but just to kind of recap the, the need for training, it's really important if you're, you know, you're doing this regularly, you've got your own gear to look after you are the person who's responsible for making sure that equipment is safe um, and one of the best ways to show competence to do those inspections is to go away and do uh, an industry specific competent person course um, so that competency is is a measure of things like your knowledge experience your aptitude for uh, inspections um, and level of qualification certification things like that so if you go and do um, a course you've got that ticket you can bring that back to your own work and then you can do your own inspections on your gear sign them off and if anyone ever looks at your paperwork in the future for some reason you know you go for an owl's license or something you've got that piece of paper to demonstrate your competency for doing that check uh, on, on that gear so it's definitely a worthwhile investment I know with outdoor instructors is always something that needs your money be it a, you know an update workshop or a, a, you know an extra training course or, or something like that but a, a PPE a competent person course is, is definitely worth the investment in your time um, so remember our principles of checking our gear are we check our history of it so we should have it recorded we make sure it is ours it's identified as a serial number or our particular type of marking on it so it's definitely one of our ones um, we check it within dates so it got an infinite lifespan has it got a limited lifespan we need to make sure it's within that and then we're going to look around the device for obvious damage we're going to feel around for damage and then we're going to check all the different functions of that device be it a carabiner, a pulley, a rope grab, whatever, to make sure it does operate properly. And of course we're checking that it's clean uh, before we kind of do that as well. Um, cool, so thanks for watching. Keep your eye out for the follow-up videos with a bit more specifics on the rest of the kit. Uh, and I'll see you soon.